Okay, so we've started the recording here. So uh, welcome to the uh, Crystals and Stones class here. And uh, this is really meant to be just for your own like real personal use. So some of the stuff uh, I'll have a little more detail on, other things I'm just gonna kind of go. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to try and not just uh, go at full speed, which as Susan knows, I'm going to do anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to try my very best to uh, to not just kind of ramble on and go at full speed, as I tend to do. Um, as I mentioned before, we started the recording. I have a bunch of notes here to try and keep me on track so I don't just go flying off on a tangent. But spiritually charged, chances are it's going to happen. We'll see. Um, so, yeah, so we have um, so this is really, again, you look at you see on the screen there uh, a how to. Uh, for a few things that have to do with crystals and stones. So first of all, I'm going to start with, I mean, this is spiritually charged, so we're going to get woo-woo. That's just where we're living here. But we're also going to start with some, like, science-y stuff. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do my very best. Stick to my notes. Okay. So we're going to move this on over here so I can see the chat, just in case. So we're going to start with some background. Uh, so what are crystals and how are they created? This is really interesting. I find it really interesting anyway. So I'm going to try to stick to the notes though and stay on, stay focused. Okay. So to start off with, so the Crystal Bible by Judy Hall calls them Earth DNA. So they are formed out of an array of minerals, typically. There are some, I'll get to it right around the end, that are a little more extraterrestrial in nature, but for now, they are made of a array of minerals. Uh, and if you have those who are here live, if you have any questions or what have you, or comments, or you need me to slow down, because <laughs> I will just go, uh, go ahead and either say something in the chat, or you can just come off mute, whatever. All right. So a crystal is defined by its internal structure. So an orderly repeating atomic lattice. And I know I didn't know what that was, so I had to look that up. And that means that it is an arrangement of atoms in a crystalline solid, <laughs> okay? Unique to its species. Next we have, so these atoms consist of particles rotating around a center in constant motion, meaning a crystal is a molecular mass vibrating at a certain frequency. And this is what gives a crystal its energy and its resonance. So that's why this is so fascinating, why I had to include it in the notes, because you might be like, who cares about, you know, what they are, how they're, how they're created, but it is actually really important to know. Okay, so some crystals were subject to enormous pressure. Others grew in chambers deep underground. Some were laid down in layers and others were formed in bubbles. Okay, and how um, they were created actually affects their, their vibration and its energy and its resonance. Okay, so again, why this is important. Okay, so we got some examples here. So for example, Quartz is created from a fiery, or from, I mean, quartz is created from the fiery gases and molten minerals in the Earth's center. Okay, so they're propelled to the surface by stresses caused by movement of huge plates on the Earth's surface. I don't know if you hear them, the dogs are just barking in the background. Those are my neighbors. If you can hear them, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So as gases penetrate the Earth's crust and meet solid rock, they cool and solidify. If this process is slow or the uh, crystal grows in a gas bubble, uh, large crystals can grow. If the process is fast, then smaller crystals will grow. Okay. Hey, GI. I just realized I didn't set my phone to quiet. Okay. 
Okay, so if this process is exceptionally fast, then you have a glass-like substance such as obsidian is formed rather than a crystal. So, like, right, I have this, if you can kind of, kind of see it. You can kind of see it here. So it's like this glassy kind of obsidian here, okay? Um, in high temperatures from liquid magma, uh, creates crystals such as aventurine and peridot. I have aventurine somewhere in here. I've got a bunch here, so. Uh, da -da -da. Okay, so when gases penetrate adjoining rocks, crystals such as topaz and tourmaline are formed. So you're starting to see how there's these, how, how they're created affects these different and creates these different types of stones and crystals. So other forms such as uh, aragonite and kunzite, some of these I can't pronounce, <laughs> arise when magma cools sufficiently for water vapor to condense into liquid, resulting in a mineral rich solution that lays down these crystals. So uh, when it penetrates fissures, I think I'm pronouncing that right, uh, in surrounding rock, the solution is able to cool uh, very slowly and lay down large crystals and geodes, such as amethyst and citrine. Okay, uh, crystals such as garnet are formed deep in the earth when minerals melt and uh, recrystallize under intense pressure and enormous heat. So I have, I think I have, is this there? No, this is Jasper. Mm, no, I think that's a different Jasper. Anyways, excuse me. Um, da -da, where are we? Okay, sedimentary crystals such as calcite form from an erosion process. Okay. So do we have any questions, anything, comments, nothing? No, okay. So again, just as important are the shapes and forms of these crystals. Okay, so we have some different ones here. Now I'm gonna go through the notes here, but as you already saw, you can see. So we have like sort of this tumbled, but glassy, okay. And then we have, um, what is it called? Uh, a like, almost like a tubular type of crystal. Let me see, oh, one second. I can move this over just so you can kind of, mm, okay, so this is my selenite stick here. So you can see that we have some just different shapes here. So you can see that. So it's got like this different shape here. Okay, and then, and we'll get to it, but I wanna also show you what I call Big Bertha. <laughs> okay, so we have this giant clear quartz that was gifted to me uh, from actually uh, from my uncle who had this under his bed. <laughs> we'll get to why that was a bad idea, why it caused him insomnia, <laughs> okay? But we had Big Bertha here under his bed and I did a um, eight hour mediumship cleansing type thing on his house, which was wildly um, haunted by all different manner of spirits. Uh, and part of his um, gift to me for doing that was giving me Big Bertha. For one, he wasn't, he doesn't know how to use it anyways. He's not metaphysical in the least. I don't know why he had this under his bed, like how he got it, why it was there, but he knew that I would actually get use out of it, proper use out of it. So he gifted it to me. So I have Big Bertha here. Okay. So, okay, so uh, crystals come in clearly all shapes, forms, and sizes, uh, and some occur naturally, and some are um, artificially like cut or tumbled, such as um, this here, this was tumbled, right? Okay. Okay, so each shape and form has its own attributes and applications. So this is why it's important to know these shapes and forms. Okay, so a geode 
gathers and holds and amplifies energy. Okay, so uh, for example, if you have a citrine um, geode, that's what's gonna help you um, to sort of attract and hold money, right? It, it lets out, I mean, geodes will slowly uh, let out energy, but rather than having say something like uh, this here, if you can, so this is citrine right here, but uh, because it's in what's called, um, let me see, and I'll get to it in a minute, but you see how it has like two points, okay? So this is what's called a double terminated crystal, and I'll get, the, get to that in a second, okay? But what you really want, if you're looking to, and uh, I have uh, more on abundance and attracting money, but would, you'd like to have for say, with a geode. So you'd have a citrine geode and that's going to, again, attract and help you. Oh, I don't know if I can. Let's see, Tamika, I'm gonna mute you real quick there, Tamika, just because I can, I can hear your background. You can come off if you'd like though. Okay. So yeah, so you have, so when you have those geodes, they, uh, so yeah, they're going to gather, hold and amplify energy. So if you're looking to um, create some financial abundance in your life, I would recommend a citrine geode versus say something like, like this, right? Or one that has like a point or what have you, or even a sphere, because that will put energy all over the place. Okay. So clusters, so you're going to have something, so you have something like, it doesn't have to be this big, but something like Big Bertha here, right? A big old, big old cluster. You can see her, that background. Okay. It's going to radiate energy outward in all directions. Okay. So if you have, say, um, a cluster of like the citrine, right? If you, if Big Bertha here was citrine, that energy would actually radiate outwards. So it's almost like you're, um, it's like sending out that energy or sending out that um, abundance energy. So it's going outward, okay? And it's the same with spherical shaped crystals, right? So if you have, I mean, often you'll see, uh, you know, uh, you have those crystal balls and what have you, right? Because it's sending out um, energy past, present and future, right? When you have something like a crystal ball, it goes past, present and future. It goes in direction, it goes in all directions, okay? Big worth of weight here. Okay. And then you have your long pointed crystals or uh, wands. Okay. Then um, they sharply focus energy and can stimulate points on the body or draw off negative n negativity. So it depends on the direction it goes, but I'll get to that. Okay. So short single pointed crystals focus energy into a beam. Okay, and I have, I don't know where she's at, but I have a clear quartz, where is she at? No, that's a rose. I have a clear quartz that, um, that has that short point, but I can't, I seem to have misplaced her. Okay, so, okay, so whether it is a long or short, uh, when a single pointed crystal is pointed away from the body, it draws energy off, and when pointed inward, you channel energy into your body. Okay, so whether that's long or short, doesn't matter. Okay. So crystals with points on both ends, so like I was saying with this citrine here, right, it's got both ends. Okay, is a double terminated crystal. This helps to break old patterns and integrate spirit and matter. Right, so in the past, okay, I had a bad habit of um, not being super smart with my money. <laughs> I had a really bad habit of, um, what is it? Like, I, anytime I got money in, I immediately had to push it out of my field. I had to push it out, push it out. So a good over 15 years ago anyways it got to a point that I ended up um having to claim bankruptcy because I was just spending 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 right just pushing anytime I got money away anytime I got money 
in my bank account or in my hands or anything as my first instinct is how do I spend it right so I got this to try to help break that habit and it and it has um, I no longer have this habit okay Okay, and I don't have one here, I don't think, but um, an egg-shaped crystal detects and corrects energy imbalances. Okay, uh, these are often used in, uh, what is that called, uh, reflexology too, so you can use those in reflexology. A square-shaped crystal consolidates energy, okay? A spiral quartz crystal. So these are typically going to be um, create like they're what is that called? Um, did I say it was called? Da, da, da. Yeah. What is that? No, the word doesn't want to come to me. Okay. So when you have a spiral. Uh, quartz crystal. Uh, this draws universal energy into the body and anchors it during meditation. Okay. A pyramid shaped crystal can amplify, then tightly focus energy through the apex. So through that apex, right? And can draw off negative energies and blockages from the chakras. So these are excellent to use in chakra, in chakra healing, okay? Layered crystals are helpful for working on several layers at once and getting to the bottom of things. I really like to use like layered like that when I'm doing things like uh, shadow work. That's just my personal use, but. Okay. A, ta a tabular crystal can help to remove confusion, misinterpretation, and misunderstandings. It also aids in communication. Um, so we have, like I have this selenite here, so this would be, it's kind of like bar shaped, but some, somewhat tubular. Um, so a tubular crystal is really great. I mean, we are just coming out of it, but it's really great to have around during that Mercury retrograde because that's when you're going to have the most, you know, confusion, misinterpretations, misunderstandings, miscommunication, right? So to have that uh, nearby during that time can be uh, really helpful. Okay. Any, let me see if there's anything in the chat. Nope. Okay. So do we have any questions on that one before I move on? Because I know I can go, right? I'm just going, going, going. Okie dokie. So choosing crystals and stones. No, wait, Susan, did you have something? Just real quick. Uh, we're seeing a lot of man-made crystals now that have the same crystal structure and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, can we use them the same as natural crystals? Or is that still open for... Um, I'd say it's a personal preference. Like for me personally, <clears throat> I like to, because I they still have the same internal structure, right? And that's going to give it its energy and its vibration. But I just, it's a personal preference that I prefer ones that came naturally from the ground because it has a natural, because it's got that added benefit, if you will, or that added vibration from the, from the earth itself versus like a man-made one, which is, I've, in my personal, you know, preference or what have you, um, isn't quite as powerful. Um, oh, Tamika, I've been staying away from man-made because I was not sure it gave off the same energy benefits. Exactly, yeah. And again, that's really just my personal preference. Um, if somebody else has used man-made crystals and they work great for you and they're, you know, you find like they're very powerful for you, all the more power to you. Go ahead and use them. Um, they just, it's just not my preference. That's all. Um, okay. And we will be doing an exercise. I want to make sure, does everybody have, because uh, I put it in the description, but I just want to see, does everybody, you can throw it in the chat. Does everybody have 
um, stones with them, like stones and crystals, like on hand that they can use for the exercise. Um, so one was to have uh, a clear and uh, energized one. Yep. And one that was not. Uh, but as long as any everybody has one or two um, or more, I've got so many <laughs> around me right now, but just to make sure that, and if you don't, that's okay. You can use these exercises on your own later on, but just for the sake of the exercise that will be coming up, I wanted to make sure everybody had um, at least one to two crystals or stones with them to use for that exercise. Okay, so choosing crystals and stones. Now, again, so we're gonna start right away with intuitively. Okay, so you can use, so you can use your, your intuition. So you can even sometimes, you know, uh, you can just close your eyes and like, you know, put your hand in, pull one out, see how that feels. Um, or just uh, even by looking at it, you might look at one, one, you know, citrine here, right? And be like, nope, but you'll look at another one and be like, yep, right? So intuitively, you can also, um, is everyone familiar with truth testing here? If you're not sure. So uh, with truth testing, this is um, sort of a subset of, in, of intuition. So you can say something like, uh, hey, truth, is this the stone for me, right? You could hold stone, be like, is this the stone for me? And uh, you'll either, you might hear, depending on your psychic abilities, you might hear a yes or no, you might feel a yes or no, um, what which you know might see something in your mind's eye but you also might have a physical type of reaction where your body almost works like a pendulum so you can always do that too so you hold that in your hand and say hey truth is this the stone for me okay and your body and you, you can will either go yes you know so it'll move forward as yes back for no or you might even slouch down for no and go up for yes right so you can just see how your body moves as well. So that's a way of truth testing it. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with truth testing, I did um, another one of these live classes about it. Um, I could maybe repost that or what, I think it's pinned in the featured, I'm not sure. But uh, so not to get too much in the truth testing because that's why I kept the notes because if I don't have the notes, your girl will go, <laughs> right? She will just go off on a tangent. So. That's just uh, real quick about truth testing, okay? There's also resonance, okay? And that's where this kind of exercise is gonna uh, come into play too. It's how it resonates with you. So for example, selenite here is supposed to be uh, good for, it's good for volume, get, I gotta put down. So it's a, for me, selenite is incredibly, like the way it resonates with my energy is so overwhelming. I cannot, like, I can't hold it that long because it just, it like blows out my energy for some reason. That's just the way it, it works for me personally. For other people, it's known to be good to have, the reason I bought it was because I was told that it was supposed to help with insomnia. It's supposed to help you with sleep and dreams and all that. And you're supposed to put it under your pillow. I literally can't even have it in my bedroom, just this small little piece. And I can't have it in my bedroom because I can't sleep. It makes my insomnia worse. It blows out my energy, right? So we wanted to also test on your resonance, how it resonates with you and your personal energy. So that's where that exercise is really gonna come in, right? So um, you might hold like, we have the subsidian here and that's, this is supposed to be really good for grounding and protection, but you might hold it and be like, you know, it might feel like nothing. You might not pick up anything, right? There might be no energy here for you. Um, and in other cases, it might be something that helps you with insomnia, right? It might just resonate with your energy differently than what it's, quote, meant to, right? Same with, you know, anything like citrine, rose quartz, any of these, um, any of these, okay? And then, of course, there's attraction. So you can look at a stone and even without knowing, you know, what it's supposed to mean or any of that jazz, right? You might look at a stone and just be like, that. I need that, right? That psychic knowing, I need that stone. You don't, might not even know why. And you might not even need to know why. You just be like, I need that stone, right? And you're attracted to it and you need it and you keep it on you, right? Okay, and then there's the 
physical, mental, emotional, and or spiritual symptoms or need. So if you have certain symptoms, you know, physical, mental, emotional, whatever, and you know what a specific, um, how a specific stone or crystal resonates with you and or you know the meaning of it, okay? You can also choose that way as well. And lastly is your zodiac sign. So for some people, you might be, um, you might find that your sun, moon, uh, and rising, if they're different or if they're all the same, whatever. You might be attracted to certain um, stones or crystals that are associated with those signs. Um, okay. And what they mean. So, you know, if you have a sun sign, that's going to be like your personality. Your moon is going to be, um, you know, those deeper emotions. And then your rising is really how people see you, right? So, uh, so my rising is actually Capricorn. So some people might see, you know, people in my personal life or who know me very well, you know, might see, see me that way. They might see me as someone who is, which I'm not, but uh, who's very like traditional, old school. Um, I am, however, extremely stubborn and a workaholic. And I'm very like, if I set, like when I set my set a goal, come hell or high water, your girl is going to achieve that goal. Very Capricorn that way. Okay. So you might be attracted to uh, the stones that are associated with that, with those, zodi with your zodiac signs. Okay. So before we move on to this next part, let's go ahead and do that exercise. So if you have um, a stone with you or a crystal with you that has been cleansed and charged, okay, I want you to just go ahead and just put that in your hand, just feel it, okay, if you can, right? <laughs> like with selenite, I'm not going to I'm not going to do this with selenite because it's my energy, okay? So I just grabbed this, uh, this here, just for this example. So, so you could just place that, or if you have a big Bertha like I do, hold that, okay, whatever. Okay, and then I just kind of want you to close your eyes because we really want to just put focus our energy in on this, on, on your crystal or your stone that is um, charged and cleansed, okay? And just feel its energy, like feel it in, in your hand, feel it in your field, okay? Even maybe tap into your your psychic senses, right? And we're all psychic, okay? So in case anybody has any limiting beliefs around that, we're all psychic, we all have psychic abilities, okay? Some are stronger than others, but we all have them, okay? So you can even just tap into that, just kind of like feel into this, to its energy, to its resonance with, with your system, right? We're going to set aside the quote unquote meanings, okay, of these of these stones and these crystals. And just what does it feel like to you? How does it resonate with your field? Is there any do you need to you might even feel like you want to put it on certain on, on your body, right? There, you might just intuitively find that you want to put it somewhere on your body. Okay, and you can if you want. Okay, I just feel is it a is it a very strong energy? Is it a soothing, calming energy? Right, just feel into that. Like even as I'm holding this, and it just so happens, okay, it might just be because it's a citrine, I don't know, okay, but I can feel like a pulsating in my solar plexus, right? So you might even notice that. You might even notice some physical, um, like, movement, like vibrating, um, if you will, in certain parts of your body.
you notice too, is there any um, softening, right? Are you, are there muscle tension that's like being loosened up? Just kind of, you know, pay attention physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, what's going on while you're holding this crystal or your stone. Okay, and then when you're ready, go ahead and if you have it, switch to your other to your other crystal or stone that was not cleansed or charged previously or um, just hasn't been in a while, right? So you can also just and do the same thing, okay? So you're gonna place that and just hold it in your hand, okay? And you're just gonna do the same thing. Is it how's is the energy different? Okay, how is it affecting your resonance field differently? Is it affecting your body, your mental, your emotional, your spiritual bodies, your fields differently? Does it, what's the energy? Is it, is it heavier? Is it maybe just not as powerful? So it's weaker? What's going on? Just feel into that. Is there tension in your body or not? Like I noticed that I wanna like crinkle my, my forehead, my, my brows here. I wanna like, there's like tension there. I also notice my breath is a little more shallow. Okay, so when you're ready, you can go ahead and just put your crystal or your stone down. Okay. Okay, and you can throw it in the chat if you'd like, if, you, if you're able to do this. Uh, and if you want to share, you don't have to. Okay, but did you notice any difference between the cleansed and cl and uh, clear the cleansed and charged crystal and the one that was not? Um, did you notice any difference? You know, how did it resonate? Was there physical differences? Just what did you notice? Basically, is what I'm asking. You can go ahead and share that if you'd like. If you don't want to, that's okay too. No pressure. This is really just for you to know, right? Okay. So the crystal that I had, and I meant to, y'all excuse me, I'm gonna come on camera, but I got on my night hat and bonnet. <laughs> this is the one that's man-made and it hasn't, I hasn't, I haven't done anything with it. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. Can you see it? It mm -hmm. starts with yeah. an O. And I don't know if it was because my limiting belief that it's not gonna do anything because I found out after the fact that it was man-made. Okay. So the other one I actually resonated with and I wear it in my bra 24-7. I got like five <laughs> crystals that I wear in there. It's comfortable there. That's where they like to be. So if people see me and I got a hump in my boobies, it's just the crystals. <laughs> same girl, same. <laughs> same. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many times I've asked, like, and I'll forget. So, like, I'll have it, because, and I'm, like, gifted in the chest area, if you will. There's an abundance there. And so I'll have, like, crystals or a crystal or whatever, like, kind of tucked in there. But sometimes I'll kind of, like, forget about it or just not not thinking. I'll go to bend over, and then I'll just, like, pop right out. <laughs> you know, like, well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> so sick. <laughs> 
Okay. So yeah, it's just to really make sure that, and you can do this with any crystals. Just try that. It's just a quick little exercise and just to see how, like, so that way you're not always dependent on the meanings of things, right? So like I said, with the selenite, one of the meanings is that it's supposed to help with insomnia. And for me, it caused insomnia, right? It heightens my energy. Um, so I actually keep it in my office to help uh, with raising that energy. And I have to keep it out of my bedroom um, because just having even a little tiny piece of it, just bing, I just, I can't. And my mind will just go. It actually, instead of like causing me to like calm down and relax and have nice dreams and all that, it actually causes my uh, thinking to like speed up <laughs> and just creates all kinds of havoc. So I can't uh, have that in, in that kind of space. Um, and it's the same with the uh, Big Bertha here with the clear quartz, why you don't want to have something like that um, in your uh, bedroom specifically, because because it's an energizer, <laughs> right? And I mean, it can be programmed and all that jazz. Sorry, my cat is starting to meow at me. Pay attention to me. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you don't want to have something like that in your room, certainly not under your bed where, you know, all that energy is radiating out. <laughs> like it was no wonder he had insomnia, apart from the fact that he was incredibly haunted. Um, so yeah. Okay, so notes. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we do it the choosing. So yeah, so when you're choosing your crystals and your stones, uh, I really do recommend um, just even if you're out in the store, right? you know, feeling into their vibrations and how they're going to work with you rather than just looking at, because I know I have, a, like, I have a bunch of these, but let me see. So let's see if you can, like in this little baggie here, we have the meaning, right? So I had that there and I have a bunch of these, but because I went to a store, right? And they had little, these little pieces of paper that said, this is what this stone means, right? I didn't want to forget what it meant at the time. So I put it, you know, I kept it in this little baggie here for the meaning. But really, like I said, make sure that you're really tapping into that energy and how it resonates with your energy, because it may not be what it's meant to do, right? So really tap into that energy. Okay. Okay, so for cleansing, programming, and charging your crystals, so there's a plethora of, of way, plethora of ways to do this. Okay, so we have um, light and color vibration. So a lot of you, I, I should mention really quickly too, those of you that are already um, energy healers, right? You're you're already um, you already have that tech, a certain technique down. So it might be Reiki, uh, chakra healing. Those are the ones I do. So as an example. Um, so you have light or color vibration. So what I like to do, and I have, and it's the same with Reiki too. So you can always have like your, well, your stone here, right? Whatever your crystal, and you can put it in your hands. Okay. And then I just kind of like cup them. Right. Okay. And close my eyes and then I will infuse it. Right. With either if I'm trying, depending on what I'm trying to do with it. Right. So you might put Reiki into it. So you have that universal energy. That's just going to, you know, um, cleanses it, but it all, it can also be healing. It can also be uh, amplifying that energy. Okay. It depends on what your intention is. Okay. And same with uh, doing light or color um, vibration. So if I want it to be healing, then I would, you know, send it the color or the light color vibration of green. If I want it to be protection, I would go blue. If I want it to just be like pure cleansed white light right so purity white light just an example okay um if i wanted it to be more about love then i might send it pink okay so you can do that that's one way of doing it and there's reiki so you can send that too um you can also for um cleansing and uh what I like to do, one of my go-tos for uh, cleansing and charging certain crystals is I will um, put them in a bowl with warm water, not hot, just like temperature, room temperature, warm 
water with um, some sea salt. I'll sprinkle a little sea salt in there. Okay, and then I'll leave it on the windowsill for 24 hours. Um, and afterwards, because sometimes uh, salt can uh, cause, like if it dries on, on your crystal, it can actually damage your crystal. So I like to rinse the crystals under running water afterwards just to get that off um, so it doesn't damage the crystal. Okay, and then again, we go with intention. So you can just hold it, whatever your intention is, right? That's what you're going to program. That's really where um, clear quartz, again, we've got this big Bertha here. I have a clear quartz, like a normal size, <laughs> like a smaller clear quartz, and I cannot find it. Um, so we have like big Bertha here, right? So we're with intention where you can just hold it again in your hands, close your eyes, right? It helps you to focus. And then when you're programming it with your intention, right? Especially clear quartz. This is like your, your master crystal. You can really program it to do pretty much anything, anything you need it to do. Um, it's also really good at, um, it's, uh, what is that word I'm looking for? Because it's programmable, it can also work almost like, a, what is that? Almost like a computer. What's that I wanna say? It's highly programmable anyways. For some reason, my brain doesn't want to <laughs> go where I want it to go. Okay. so. And again, with selenite, going back to selenite, um, you can also have a selenite, like a big selenite bar. Like uh, my uh, Reiki master would you because he also does uh, uh, card readings and whatnot. So when he's trying to protect his own energy, right, he's still doing a card reading for the other person, but to protect his own energy, he'll actually, he has like this big selenite bar that he puts between him and the other person to protect his energy from that person. Okay, so you can have, but so it's, it can be protective. It's also um, uh, infused with like angelic energy. So if you need that protection there, that um, that's there too. It can help with um, tapping into um, the energetic realms, the en angelic realms. That's what I was trying to say. Okay, so you have the selenite bar or bowls or plates. Um, these are really, so selenite is really good for, um, cleansing and charging other crystals. It's also self-cleansing and charging. So you don't have to, and I think I mentioned that here, um, but you don't have to um, cleanse or charge a selenite um, piece, okay? So you can also, but you can put, like I, I often will put my, you know, my crystals on top of my little selenite bar there, my little stick there to um, cleanse and charge them. Okay, so we have citrine, kyanite, uh, azet, can never say this, azetylite, <laughs> and selenite are self-cleansing, as I said. Clear quartz and carnelian cleanse other crystals, but will need cleansing themselves. Okay. Okay, any uh, questions, anything before I move on? A sip of water. No, okay. Airing for your crystals. Okay, so I keep all of my crystals and stones, so I don't know if I can. This will show up. I might have to take the background off to show you, but ooh, they're all falling apart. Okay, but okay, if I can show you here. So you can see they're all in like, and I got a ton of them. This is just the handful I happen to grab off the side here, but I keep them all in these little separate baggies. Okay. Uh, to keep them from getting damaged. Okay. But also so that their energies don't like intermix when I don't want them to like intermix, but really I keep them in these little separate baggies. <clears throat> Originally I had done this, like I said, I still have these, uh, the quote meanings uh there so i'd originally done that to you know make sure that i had the meetings with the stones so i wouldn't get confused but now i do this because it protects them it keeps them from getting damaged so tumbled stones are less likely oh excuse me i had to burp after i had that so water so tumbled stones are less likely to be damaged if kept in like um, if I had them all just out and just had them in like that little, like this little baggie that I have here, 
okay? They, they're less likely, the tumbled ones are less likely to get damaged if I had just kept them all in that baggie, okay? Or, or whatnot. But crystals are actually uh, more fragile. So like these like, you know, these like raw ones, okay, are uh, more fragile. And so I recommend keeping them uh, apart from each other just to keep them from getting damaged. Selenite is water soluble. So I do not recommend placing it in water, <laughs> okay? Do not do that. Um, and again, as mentioned pre uh, earlier, it is um, self-cleansing and charging. Um, so a charging that uh, you don't need to cleanse or charge uh, this. And it charges and, and uh, cleanses other crystals too. So, um, and uh, also do not leave amethyst in sunlight as it will fade over time. Okay. So uh, again, with amethyst, I would put that probably uh, on like a selenite plate or what have you, just to make sure that it gets cleansed and charged, but it doesn't uh, fade in sunlight. Okay. Did you, did you? Okay. So for protection, my personal go-to, there's lots of them, but my personal go-tos are black, black obsidian and black tourmaline, specifically black tourmaline. Like that's my number one. And if for some reason I, you know, didn't have it on hand, then I would have black obsidian. Uh, those are my go-tos for protections, specifically black tourmaline. This is really going to protect you from, um, uh, you know, I bring this up when I go to do like uh, spiritual medium, like when I'm doing mediumship, and especially if I'm doing like some kind of cleansing, or I know I'm going in against a demonic type entity, like a negative or like a malevolent spirit, I will keep black tourmaline on me to protect me, okay? that protects my energy so that I don't get Klingons. And, and uh, it also protects against psychic attack. So basically any like negative type of energy, black tourmaline specifically uh, can protect you. So you can also make um, a grid out of this. So if you wanted to protect your home, you can use black tourmaline, uh, selenite or sardonyx. Um, and you would put uh, a piece of that in each corner of your home or your room. Uh, to create that grid. And then if you can, uh, you can also place uh, a, you can place a, a piece of a, bit, a piece of it outside by your front and or back doors to keep those protected. Yeah, under your pillow too. Yeah. Just to keep it. Yeah, I could see how that would uh, help keep you protected, you know, nightmares and what and what have you. So, so that, so that one was just like a little, a little quick one. Okay. So, but those are my go-tos. So if I'm going up against, again, if I'm trying to protect against psychic attack or um, just negative energies, just in general, right? People are, you know, if you're going to the mall, there's negative energy just everywhere. So keep black tourmaline on you to protect you. You can kind of keep that as protection, to keep that away from you. Uh and again, for me personally, if I'm dealing with a malevolent spirit or demonic type entity, black tourmaline, okay, helps with that, helps protect against that. Okay, so now we're going to go into healing in the chakras. Uh, I will preface this by saying that those of you who took my, uh, my chakra healing course will be very familiar with this. But for those who did not take that course or have not taken that course yet, this is for you, okay? So starting off with healing. Crystals heal holistically, meaning that they work on the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual levels of being. Okay, so the whole kit and caboodle, okay? By getting to the root cause, they can realign subtle energies and dissolve diseases. Okay, but they're very subtle. Okay, so keep that in mind. They do this through vibration. Right, and so some of their vibrations, again, so and it depends on how it resonates with you, right? So some of them are gonna resonate very, very strongly and some of them are gonna be, are not so much, right? So, and it could be very subtle, okay? And some crystals and stones are known to just, again, depending on how it resonates with you, but some are known to be very gentle, right? Just naturally, they just happen to be very gentle, okay? So they do this through vibration, rebalancing the, biomagnetic body sheath field whatever your word is for it okay that ener your energy body right 
and activating linkage points to the chakras that regulate the body's vibrational stasis, okay? To choose a crystal for healing, you can work intuitively and or from your symptoms or with a qualified crystal healer. Okay. So with the chakras, to balance and align the seven main chakras, the crystals and stones I personally use. So this is not the end all be all, right? And again, how it actually resonates with you, right? So I might say like with, with number one here, black tourmaline for root chakra. That might not be true for you. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is not like hard rules here. This is just what works for me, okay? So the crystal and stones I use are black tourmaline for the root chakra, orange carnelian for the sacral chakra, yellow smithsonite for the solar plexus chakra, water watermelon tourmaline for the heart chakra, Okay, and the reason I use water, watermelon tourmaline specifically, now you can use um, aventurine or rose quartz, but the reason I use watermelon is because it's a combination of the two, right? So one is, you know, for love and the other is specific to healing. So I like to have watermelon tourmaline for the heart chakra so that it uh, works off of both that self-love, unconditional love, and also the healing aspect. Okay, of the heart chakra. Uh, we have lapis lazuli for the throat chakra, labradorite for the third eye chakra, and charoite for the crown chakra. Okay, so that's to balance and align the seven main chakras. Okay, and uh, I think I mentioned it at the end here, but you would, um, or at least I do anyways, you can place these either directly on your body or around your body but in line, like if you're gonna do it around your body, it would be in line with that specific chakra, or at least that's how I do it anyways. Okay, additionally, you may also want to include the earth star and soul star chakras by placing a brown tourmaline stone just below the feet. So that's your earth star chakra and a clear quartz crystal just above the head for your soul star chakra. Okay, but again, those are the ones I use. These are not hard rules. Okay. To unblock the seven main chakras, the crystals and stones I use are hematite for the root chakra, amber for the sacral chakra, and also note that amber is technically not a crystal. Um, it's fossilized tree resin, but it strongly resonates with the sacral chakra and draws negative energy from the body. Okay. Rhodochrysolite for the solar plexus chakra, melanite for the heart chakra, chrysocola for the throat chakra, purple violet tourmaline for the third eye chakra, and selenite for the crown chakra. Okay, so that's what I use to unblock the seven main chakras. To activate and energize the seven main chakras. Okay, so this is, um, I would use the, so I use these specifically when I'm doing, um, if someone has like a blockage, oh, it says my connection is unstable. Can you guys still hear me okay? Am I frozen? Can you hear me? Yes, no? Yes, okay. Great. Okay, so to activate and energize these seven uh, main chakras. So I would, I use these when I'm doing, so if a chakra or the, you know, one or more of the chakras are, um, are uh, blocked or just underactive, this is, I use, these are the crystals that I use to help activate and energize. So, uh, and those. Uh, okay, so red jasper for the root chakra, red tourmaline for the sacral chakra, citrine for the solar plexus chakra. So you, when I was doing, when we were doing that uh, exercise and I said, you know, I was holding the citrine, I was like, oh, I feel that in my solar plexus, right? So that's letting me know, oh, okay. So I think my solar plexus chakra might've been, it's not blocked, but it was definitely, 
it's definitely underactive, right? That's what that's letting me know, okay? Okay, so note, true citrine is a pale, almost translucent yellow. So let me see if you can see that. I know it's kind of hard with this background and all that, but it's it's really light. Okay, let's see if you can see it from this side. Okay, it's really light. Okay, so true citrine is a pale, almost translucent yellow, heated tourmaline. Okay, heated, treated, sorry, let me say that again. Heat treated amethyst is often sold as citrine as it has a dark yellow to brown yellow color, but it still holds the amethyst frequency and thus is only useful for amethyst work, not citrine, okay? I also have, I have a tumbled one, a little tumbled one too that I keep in my purse. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Rose quartz for the heart chakra, aquamarine for the throat chakra, lapis lazuli, lapis lazuli again, for the third eye chakra, and amethyst for the crown chakra. Okay. So those are the ones I use to activate and, energ and energize these chakras. Okay, now we're coming around to the end of this part. So to calm, so if you have an overactive chakra, okay, these are the ones that I use to kind of calm that down, <laughs> okay? Try to bring that uh, kind of back into balance, just calm it down, bring it into balance, okay? So to calm the seven main chakras, the crystals I personally use are aragonite for the root chakra, citrine for the sacral chakra, zebra dorite for the solar plexus chakra, green aventurine for the heart chakra, blue lace agate for the throat chakra, sodalite for the third eye chakra, and howlite for the crown chakra. Okay. And again, and again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, crystals can be placed on or around the body, okay, for about 10 to 30 minutes, typically, as needed, okay? You usually don't need more than 30 minutes. Um, so, yeah. If you need more, you need more, but typically that's, you know, about, depending on your needs, right? So 10 to 30 minutes. Okay. Now, okay, so now we're coming around the end because I know this is only supposed to be an hour long and it's going to be a little bit over, but not too bad. I didn't go off on a tangent yet, so we're not too bad. Sometimes we go half hour plus over because y'all girl can talk, okay? So now we're just going to go boom, 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 okay? So for abundance, my go-to for attracting and keeping financial abundance, as I mentioned earlier, is citrine but specifically in a geode form, right? So that way I'm keeping and attracting, right? I'm attracting and keeping <laughs> that financial abundance, right? I'm not just spewing it all over the place, right? Okay, so that's my go-to. I'm sure there's many more, there's many more. I'm just, these are the, this is the one that works best for me. Okay, so the ones I use for energizing are clear quartz, diamond, garnet, kyanite, and fire opal. So those are the ones that resonate best with mine for, and the selenite, uh, which I can't, I just, for me with the selenite, I just, I can't like, even now just holding it, I just, it like feel, it just, it's too much. It's too much. It feels almost like, what do I want to say? Like a, like I can feel its vibration. Like it's just like this overwhelming buzzing feeling in my hand. And I just, I can't, like, I literally have to just put it down. <laughs> so I have it near me for energizing, but I can't hold it for very long. It just, I can't do it. Okay, so for grounding, I use smoky quartz, brown tourmaline, agate, bloodstone, uh, galena, I think is how you pronounce it, and uh, mag magnetite. Okay, so th those are the ones that work for me for grounding. Oh, I keep going. Am I still good? It says my internet connection is wonky. 
I just want to make sure that it, if I'm frozen, but you can still hear me, that's all that matters if you can hear me. Okay. If at any point, for some reason that I freeze and you can't hear me, um, throw it in the chat. Hopefully I'll see it. Okay, so that was ground. Now, <clears throat> for love, so it depends on what your needs are, but uh, rose quartz is a good one for love. So this is with self-love and attracting love. It's, you know, the love stone, if you will, or uh, crystal. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, watermelon tourmaline, right? So if you have, say, I like to use this one and when in regards to love as... Um, a love like healer in that way, if I'm going to use it for something like that. So if I have, say, a broken heart, um, I would, you know, I would use water uh, watermelon tourmaline for, say, a broken heart, for mending a broken heart. Okay. Okay. And then lastly, we're going to get a little weird here, but this is spiritually charged. So here we go. Extra extraterrestrial. Okay. <laughs> so we're getting a little weird here. Tektite is actually a meteorite and therefore extraterrestrial in origin. So I mentioned that at the very, very beginning. That's they're made of minerals, but some are not from here. <laughs> OK, so and tektite is one of those. It is a meteorite. OK, it's believed to enhance communication with other worlds and dimensions and to encourage spiritual growth. OK, Moldavite is said to aid in extraterrestrial communication as it's believed that it is a fusion of extraterrestrial energy with earth. It's believed that it formed when a meteorite struck the earth and the heat of the impact uh, metamorph metamorphed, metamorphosed, I can't pronounce that word. It's one of those things you, you look at the word and you're like, yep, I know what that word is. Try to say it out loud and your tongue just goes, <clears throat> okay. So the heat of the impact metamorphs, metamorphs the surrounding rock. Okay. Change the rock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Specifically for my fellow star seeds, uh, I think it's pronounced cerusite. C-E-R-U-S-S-I-T-E -S -S -E. helps with feelings of homesick and helps to uh, explore your non-human past lives and why you chose to come to Earth. Okay, so a lot of us are um, star seeds. We have many past lives, right? We were all different kinds of um, quote-unquote aliens, okay? We were all we're from all over the place. We have a um, uh, brain went. We all have, we have an origin point, okay? But we just like, you know, being becoming human, we were, you know, this and that and the other thing throughout the cosmos, okay? So this can, and oftentimes uh, star seeds can feel homesick either for their point of origin which is the, what I was looking for, that point of origin. So when they first came into creation, millions, billions, trillions of years ago, right? Or for uh, their previous incarnation, right? Their most recent previous incarnation or one that was uh, the most, or one of the ones that were the most meaningful to them, right? They really felt like this is home wherever that was in the cosmos, right? Uh, and so sometimes you can have this feeling of sick or homesick or I don't belong here, right? That's really common. Uh, so this can help you with that. This can help you with those feelings of, be of being homesick and can help you to explore those non-human past lives uh, and why you came here, why you chose to incarnate on earth as a human being. In its star shape, um, can assist in extraterrestrial communication. Okay. And that is actually it for my notes. So 
if you no, pardon me. So if you have any uh, questions or comments that you'd like to share in the in this recording before I turn that off, uh, again, come off mute, throw it in the chat, what have you. Um, if there's anything that you think I missed um, that you'd like more information on, let me know. And yeah, so this is sort of the Q&A, I guess you could say. Again, we've gone just barely, just by a smidge, we've gone over just a tiny bit. So I'm going to leave a little bit of room here if there's a Q&A or comments that you guys want to make. Anybody? No? Okay. We think we're all... And again, this was meant to be just sort of, um, if you will, like a... Oh, angel number 811. Ah, okay. So yeah, this was really just meant to be, again, for your personal use, right? So this isn't like a thorough course like I would do, say, on Udemy, right? I would, um, and if you want me to do a thorough co course on Udemy, I will, let me know. But this is really just meant, like I said, to be for your personal use, just kind of like some basic stuff for you to, you know, basic knowledge, basic use, right? To have just for your personal use. If you'd like to um, go deeper, learn more, um, like I said, let me know and I will, you know, do a, a crystal healer course, like a full blown one for Udemy uh, that's certified. If not, we can, if this is all you, all you wanted and this is useful, then great. Um, Okay, I don't see anybody in the chat. Oh, Carmen, did you have anything? Yes, I wanted to say that I really appreciate that exercise. Could you hear me? Yes, yeah. I can hear you. Okay, so yes. I really appreciated the exercise because it was a big difference when I held the first um, crystal and it was, it was cleansed. And from the second crystal that wasn't, the second one made me right away like get chills because it wasn't cleansed and the first one gave me this overpowering feeling of love I actually had a rose quartz mm -hmm. was the one that I took and my heart was like full and I I was holding and I was like oh my god I hope she tells me to put it down because <laughs> I wanted it gave me this self-love that was so overpowering Mm -hmm. that I was like trying to contain myself. And then when I held the other one, it was just like, I cringed. I was like, oh my God. So that it's really crazy how, so that was like my first experience of feeling that because I was concentrating on it. So thank you for that. Oh, my pleasure. And yeah, that's <laughs> something that um, I teach very strongly uh, in Spiritually Charged is really to, how is how it's paying attention and focusing on your energy field, right? And how something like even somebody's words, how is that bumping up or your or thoughts or whatever? How is that bumping up against your energy field and your resonance field, right? Uh, like how is that resonating? You know, how's that resonating with you, kind of thing. So, and it's you know whether it's uh, somebody's words, their thoughts, if it's like a tangible kind of object right to really um feel into that energy and be aware of your energy body and how it's affecting your physical your mental and your emotional states okay so i'm, I'm glad that that was helpful to you and then you can still use um that sim that similar technique in other parts when like i said even if it's just that's part of truth testing as well as so how is it feeling in your energy field and tapping into the psychic abilities more that's one way to um enhance your psychic abilities is through an exercise like to, uh, similar to that yeah I really like that I appreciate you saying that I'm I'm so glad because I I never paid attention to that so that to me is like that was worth so much so I appreciate oh. you teaching us that all right well I'm glad <laughs> that that was helpful to you uh and it was my absolute pleasure um and if there is there anything else? If anybody has anything else, otherwise I will wrap it up and celebrate that I didn't go a half an hour or more over <laughs> <laughs> as I can because your girl likes to chat. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, then. You did great. 
<laughs> okay, so with uh, that said then, thank you so, so much for being here. This was so much fun. And again, if you want me to do a more expanded version of this, let me know uh, in the group and I will uh, and I will do that. Or we could do maybe more classes. We'll see. We'll see how we get there. And that's another thing too. That I, did kind of want to I did the Udemy yeah. and the, the chakra healing. So I definitely look forward to you doing other ones. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so yeah. So, right, so have a good so night. Yes, you have a great night. Have a great rest of your day, your evening, whatever time it is for you. I'm so glad this was helpful. So glad you were here. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the group. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night.